There were rumors of espionage unsubstantiated. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the 10 questions you may have after seeing Oppenheimer answered. Dr. Oppenheimer, could you tell us what your thoughts are about what our atomic policy should be? For this list, we're not just looking at historical-based questions, but also creative inquiries you might have walking out of Christopher Nolan's film about J. Robert Oppenheimer. If we missed any questions you had, ask them in the comments. Hey Mojoholics! For a chance to win cash prizes, play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern only at watchmojo.com slash play. Why weren't the attacks in Japan shown? The film's major set piece sees the Trinity test successfully executed, but the subsequent bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are notably omitted. Oppenheimer never apologized in any way for Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The characters discuss the attacks, but beyond Oppenheimer's imagination, we don't see the effects of the bombings. Following a screening of the film, Nolan explained that he didn't want to stray from Oppenheimer's perspective. You are the man who gave them the power to destroy themselves, and the world is not prepared. As Nolan put it, quote, We know so much more than he did at the time. He learned about the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki on the radio, the same as the rest of the world. The film is largely about Oppenheimer's inner conflict as he grapples with his creation. Although Oppenheimer didn't witness the bombings in Japan, he could certainly envision the ghastly aftermath, leaving him with ambivalent feelings. Hiroshima was far more costly in life and suffering and inhumane than it needed to have been. Did Kitty Oppenheimer have a career? Kitty Oppenheimer remained by her husband's side through thick and thin but the film glances over her life beyond marriage and motherhood. I think she was very frustrated by being put in the position of a mother and a wife and nothing else. Around the same time that she met Robert, Kitty received her BA in botany for about a year while living in Los Alamos, running blood tests to evaluate the effects of radiation on people. Although she was a trained biologist, Kitty felt limited during her stay at Los Alamos, becoming better known for her cocktail parties. She was an academic, she was a biologist and a botanist, and ultimately that work was all put to one side for the years at Los Alamos. The film only touches upon her alcohol use, which worsened after the war, leading to several accidents and broken bones. Kitty struggled with pills and smoking as well. Five years after Robert died, Kitty passed away due to an embolism at age 62. She did not thrive at Los Alamos. It was a lonely and hard existence. What was Einstein's role in the atomic bomb? His greatest achievement, E equals MC squared, also becomes this thing that can destroy the world. In a couple of key scenes, Oppenheimer discusses the possible ramifications of nuclear weaponry with Albert Einstein. Being a pacifist with left-winged views, Einstein wasn't granted security clearance for the Manhattan Project. Despite not being directly involved in its construction, Einstein helped light the fuse that led to the atomic bomb. The energy that the bomb releases is linked to the E equals MC squared equation, which Einstein formulated. As such, Einstein was asked to write a letter to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt encouraging the study of atomic energy. On August 2, 1939, Einstein co-signed a letter to President Roosevelt alerting him to a new phenomenon that would lead to the construction of bombs. Einstein was motivated by the fear that the Germans might build a bomb. He came to regret the letter, saying, quote, had I known that the Germans would not succeed in developing an atomic bomb, I would have done nothing. When Einstein heard the news, he put his head in his hands and said, I could burn my fingers that I wrote that letter to President Roosevelt. What's up with the black and white cinematography? Oppenheimer shifts between being presented in color and black and white. While not the first time Nolan has done this, the symbolism here has confused some audiences. We're in a race against the Nazis. And I know what it means. Nolan wrote Oppenheimer from a first-person perspective, which he's never done before. Although Nolan explores much of Oppenheimer's life through a subjective lens, he wanted certain scenes to take an objective approach. He distinguished the two by draping the subjective scenes in color. When the film strays from Oppenheimer's point of view, focusing on another figure like Louis Strauss, black and white cinematography is utilized to emphasize the objective shift. So now the race is against the Soviets. Not unless we started. Robert, they just fired 
a starting gun. Nolan further distinguished the two by marking the color scenes as fission, whereas the black and white scenes are labeled fusion. Both involve nuclear reactions, but fission splits atoms while fusion unites them. Data indicates it may have been a plutonium implosion device. Like the one you built at Los Alamos. Did Klaus Fuchs face consequences for spying? There were rumors of espionage. Unsubstantiated. Los Alamos. There's no proof there was a spy at Los Alamos. A theoretical physicist, Klaus Fuchs only briefly appears in Oppenheimer, flying under the radar until it's later revealed that he was spying for the Soviet Union. Although Fuchs wasn't the only spy who infiltrated the Manhattan Project, he perhaps left the most prominent impression. Nous savons complices comme Fuchs ou Hall sortaient les documents de Los Alamos et le remettait à des agents que j'avais appelé des messagers. Joining the project in 1943, Fuchs came to be viewed as a valuable asset, being present for the Trinity test. After his espionage came to light, Fuchs pled guilty and received a 14-year sentence in 1950. Only serving nine years due to good behavior, Fuchs was sent back to the German Democratic Republic where he resumed his research. Klaus Fuchs was a real soldier, and his pro-communist activism was publicly known. Arrested in the United States in 1950, he spent nine years in American prison. He'd even become the Institute for Nuclear Research in Rossendorf's deputy director, holding the position until his retirement in 1979. Was Jean Tatlock murdered, or did she take her own life? It seems I can't believe we're really not together, you and me. <laughs> but it's been years. Yeah. Incredible, isn't it? Not long after spending one last night together, Oppenheimer learns that Jean Tatlock has died. Although she apparently took her own life, the film suggests that foul play might have been afoot. While some have theorized that Tatlock was assassinated by intelligence officers, most historians agree that she died by her own hand. The day after her death, Tatlock's father discovered her body submerged in the bathtub with an unsigned note. The message didn't spell out exactly what drove Tatlock to this point, although she had been living with clinical depression for some time. It's not you. I told Zimmerman, it's, it's not a man, it's my life, it's my sticking, messy life, I hate it. The Trinity Test derived its title from the poetry of John Donne. Since Tatlock introduced Oppenheimer to Dunn's work, some speculate that the test was named Trinity in honor of her. Robert. You've always been so kind to me. You've always been so kind. What became of Louis Strauss? Thanks for convening a short notice. I can't believe it. Well, here we are. Louis Strauss's personal vendetta against Oppenheimer would ultimately be his undoing. As depicted in the film, the Senate denied Strauss's nomination for Secretary of Commerce, his treatment towards Oppenheimer being a major point of contention. Despite not getting the position, Strauss maintained a professional relationship with Herbert Hoover and President Eisenhower. Yet the Senate's rejection essentially killed Strauss's government career, which he never quite got past. It can't go on. No. He's got to be stopped. He'll be leaving the commission soon. His term is up. I mean, his influence has got to be stopped. Retiring to his Virginia farm, Strauss remained active in philanthropy, got involved in cattle breeding, and wrote a memoir, Men and Decisions. Strauss was also working on an unfinished book about Hoover before succumbing to lymphosarcoma in 1974. History remembers Strauss as a polarizing figure, with his legacy inevitably tied to Oppenheimer's. I think he was a great public servant, but he's always behind the scenes. I've always appreciated the people who are backstage. What happened to Oppenheimer and his children? When I was a young man, I wanted to have a significant life. Now they're saying it's a tragedy. Outside of receiving the Enrico Fermi Award in 1963, the film doesn't delve into Oppenheimer's life after having his security clearance revoked. Oppenheimer spent much of his later years on St. John of the Virgin Islands with his family. How are you feeling, Robert? How am I feeling? A lot of people want to be remembered to you. Good, good. They're saying it's a tragedy what happened. It was no tragedy, a farce maybe. He'd continue to give public lectures, remaining an admired figure in the scientific and academic communities. While Oppenheimer never formally apologized for the atomic bomb, he would spend the rest of his life contemplating how nuclear weapons would affect humanity. With countless other men and women, we are engaged in this great enterprise of our time, testing whether men can live without war. 
A longtime chain smoker, Oppenheimer was diagnosed with throat cancer in 1965, leading to his death almost two years later. Oppenheimer's daughter Tony hung herself at the family beach house in 1977. Oppenheimer's son Peter inherited his New Mexico ranch, where he still resides. Did the Trinity test impact locals? The Manhattan Project might have been top secret during World War II, but now you can visit several Los Alamos sites depicted in the film, including where the Trinity test was conducted. We're at V-Site, and this is where the components for the Trinity device were assembled. The Trinity test took place in the Hornada del Muerto Desert, which neighbors the counties of Lincoln, Otero, San Miguel, Sierra, Socorro, and Torrance. In the years following the test, numerous people from these New Mexico counties reported health issues, ranging from heart disease to cancer. You know, nobody knows exactly how much radiation you got if you lived in, say, Ely, Nevada versus, say, um, Battle Mountain. Due to their proximity to the test site, these locals were dubbed downwinders. Many of these people have struggled to pay for medical treatment, ultimately succumbing to their illnesses. Even with the introduction of the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act of 1990, the downwinders have yet to be compensated. The free medical screenings for downwinders has for some resulted in compensation. The program ends in August, and Dr. Hunt is trying to secure enough funding for another three years. Here are some honorable mentions. What happened to Edward Teller? The father of the hydrogen bomb received the Enrico Fermi Award a year before Oppenheimer. Edward Teller was there that day come to offer his congratulations. When he extended his hand, once again, Oppenheimer shook it. What happened to General Groves? After his years of service ended, he became VP of Sperry Rand, a now defunct equipment and electronics brand. Chances are near zero. Near zero. What do you want for theory alone? Zero would be nice. What happened with the H-bomb's development? President Truman pushed to complete the second-generation nuclear weapon, which was tested for the first time in 1952. When you start talking about hydrogen bombs, now we're talking about megatons. We're talking about a million tons of TNT. What happened to Patrick Blackett, AKA the poisoned apple professor? His cloud chamber research would lead to a Nobel Prize in physics. I was made president of the Royal Society in 1965 and I was made a baron in 1969. I even had a crater on the moon named after me. Should I see Oppenheimer and Barbie on the same day or separate days? Depends on the screening times and what kind of mood you're in, but I recommend it. Definitely see Barbie second. We saw Barbie at three and then we we're doing Oppenheimer at six, so it's like a full day thing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Have atomic bombs been used since World War II? Although Nolan's crew used real explosives to reenact the Trinity test, it should go without saying that they didn't use an actual A-bomb. All of which was leading to the Trinity test which had to feel nightmarish and terrifying in a way that computer graphics never really is. As a matter of fact, nuclear weapons haven't been utilized in combat since the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. However, just because nuclear weapons haven't been used doesn't mean that they aren't still being developed. The US and Russia reportedly possess 90% of the almost 13,000 nuclear weapons in existence. 1,500 nuclear warheads is more like 2,000 or or 2,500 warheads, but still, it's, it is a limit on the, on the number. The remaining 10% is divided between several other countries, including China. Since the atomic bomb's development, these weapons have become 80 times deadlier. While above-ground and underwater nuclear tests are now outlawed, the threat of nuclear warfare remains very much in the zeitgeist. And says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that, one way or another. 